All right, I've compiled three DIY kayak modification videos and their installs in one video. I'm gonna show you how to make a DIY keel guard to protect that investment, DIY leashes so you don't drop your paddles, your pliers, your clippers to the bottom of the lake. And I'm also gonna show you how to do a hatch modification uh, that will increase your storage 5X. And you'll see in my description, I put some timestamps in in case you wanna bounce around the video. Let's start with one of my favorites, the DIY keel guard. So I did a bunch of research on what the best way to protect your haul and I came across a bunch of goofy videos on YouTube. One of my favorites was, there's a ton of these. People are like, oh, we're using Gorilla Tape to protect the haul of my kayak and it's working great. Really? You think that right there is going to protect your haul? Seriously? I was able to do this build for around $25 and it is definitely heavy duty. I beat this thing up out on the water. So I was looking for a material that could take a beating and keep on kicking, Kydex. This stuff is awesome. It's waterproof, it's scratch resistant, it's got a Rockwell hardness of 90, which means it's super rock hard, and it's moldable, especially when you apply heat. So now you can see why it would make a great keel guard for your fishing kayak. Okay, you're gonna need some tools and materials for this build. Two pieces of Kydex, I'll throw the link in the description where you can get those. Heat gun, pair of gloves, a Dremel, and keep in mind here, you have a cutting tool on the end. Um, so you can use a variety of different cutting tools. This is a circular one. Uh, two pieces of paper. Uh, Gorilla heavy duty mounting tape, 60 pounds. It's important, I'll throw that in the link below as well. Any type of tape, I just happen to have this. Pair of scissors, Sharpie, and some silicone. Step one is going to be identifying where you actually want to put the keel guards. As you can see here, I get a lot of scuff marks, especially toward the back, but most of the people want the keel guards right here. And as you can see, I got some deep cuts, so I'll definitely be putting one right here here. Um, you see, uh, I want this to lip over, so I'm going to have to create there and there, so this can lip down, and then bring this down, out, down, out, and so when it gets done, I'll cut this out, and this will fold down, and this will wrap around. Now, as you can see, your lines are wonky from the trace, but when you cut out your template, uh, you can tighten up those lines. All right, double check one last time before you cut. That's why I want that one to look. And this one looks good as well. I'll probably extend this one a little, long, a little bit longer to use the entire piece of Kydex, and then it'll kind of mold over right to the beginning of my scuffs. So use this as a template uh, and mark out your Kydex for the cut. Um, basically, you take out your Dremel, or your cutting tool is. I put it on a piece of cardboard so I can go along the cardboard, and if it cuts through, it doesn't cut into my uh, workbench. Uh, so let's go ahead and make it happen. And there you are. Cut down and just sand this off really fast and make the other cuts. All right, now here we're gonna need your heat gun. Uh, your templates, I sanded and washed this off for looks, so it looks really nice. Uh, and then you're gonna spend a lot of time heating this up and molding it to the form of your boat. It's gonna take a while, but we'll get there. And once you get the kind of hot dog style molded over your boat, you tape it into place and you kind of start molding. And that's how I'm wearing gloves, so this is gonna be really hot. You don't wanna burn yourself, so here we go. Can I see that? It's kind of flopping around, it's good, it's still warm. When it cools, it gets hardened, which is really nice. So. Ha -ha. Look at that. Perfectly molded to boat hull. Alright, took about 10 minutes, but man, you just kind of mold it out. Now it's perfectly molded to the hull of my boat. And the dimensions there. So we'll get that in a minute. Now I just gotta do the second piece on the back. All right, so, so far so good. Back's coming together nicely, just how I wanted it. It bubbles out a little bit right here, so I'm gonna heat it up right here and here. And one more time down here and clamp it and let it cool. We should be good. Another thing I'm doing is I had some pretty deep gashes in there. So I'm gonna heat this up. And the beauty of it, once it gets hot, you can kind of press on it. And uh, I wanna make sure there's no, uh, water can't get underneath my adhesive whenever we attach the keel guard. So I'm gonna heat this up, kind of press it down and make sure it's nice and even. And you can kind of see the difference when I get done here in a second. 
All right, as you see, I just put the heat gun on there. I didn't even really have to touch it. it just kind of melted a little bit and uh, made a nice smooth seal when we put our Gorilla Tape adhesive on it. All right, now that you have both your molds all molded, now it's time to get your Gorilla Tape that you purchased off of Amazon. This is the stuff, 60 pounds. It's gonna be 10 feet. All right, as you can see, I got all the Gorilla Tape on there side by side, it's nice and tight, which is fine if it's not, but the idea is uh, try to not let as much water in here as possible, at least as amount as possible. So um, when we get it back on here, we're gonna seal the outsides with some silicone. Um, let's go ahead and peel this off. All right, I put some alcohol in here to make sure it's super clean. All right, here's the moment of truth. Nice and sticky. I mean, if you wanted to, you could probably go over the heat gun again, lightly heat it, um, just so it's, but this isn't, I mean, I'd have to pop that off pretty good. I don't think that's coming off. Oh man, this is turning out great. Oh yeah, that's awesome. All right, that's going to be a little bit difficult. You can take on the, peel the sides, and then you're gonna have to get that on there without the sides catching first, so you're gonna have to kind of pull it apart a bit, as much as you possibly can. It does give a little bit. And actually, uh, I might get like a rubber hammer and hit it down to make sure it's nice. All right, got my rubber mallet. All right. I can hear it, I can hear it popping off. Hear that a little bit? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the heat gun over this a little bit to make it a little more malleable. Um, and then, this, Push it the guard with my gloves and the stickiness should keep it from popping out a little bit. All right, now when I push on it, I'm gonna hear it pulling back apart. So I kind of like it. I like that a lot. All right, got the secure guard in the back. I don't hear anything trying to pop up or release from the boat, so I think that looks good. Man, that's awesome. All right, well the last steps is getting yourself some silicone and making sure you go around all the edges here. We do not want water, any water getting up in there. Um, your boat flexes and if water gets up in there, it's just gonna pop that seal. And so buy some silicone, instead of getting the big, huge tubs of it, or you know, the caulking gun, I want a little bit more dexterity, so I got something small here. So let's go ahead and cut this up. result sealed 30 minutes later man looking good not coming off there kydex man this is awesome all right now that we've protected the hull of your kayak let's have some fun with the next modification and create one of these guys a diy kayak leash for just about anything you want attached to your boat you know you could purchase leashes online and to be honest with you they're not that expensive but what i don't like about them is the length they're not that long and once they get stretched out they do this garbage which i am not a fan of so with a trip to the thrift store and a few other supplies you can actually make some high quality leashes for your kayak paddle for your pliers for your clippers or whatever else you don't want falling to the bottom of the lake when it falls out of your boat kayak or canoe. all right we need some supplies and what you need to do is just head over to the thrift store and find some old pigtail phone chargers and man i am talking old school check that out i don't even know if these are fun i have vague memories of using these when i was younger uh you're also going to need some zip ties eight inch will do just fine uh hyper tough 3m it really doesn't matter which ones you use uh, you can use, find heat shrink tubing, an assortment of that would be great. For this particular job and for a lot of this type of size wire, you're going to need some 5 16 uh, heat shrink tubes, uh, just like this one right here. And last but not least, you're going to need some 6 centimeter carabiners. If you don't happen to have all these supplies, I'll throw the links in the description below. Alright, we got some tools here as well that I assume that you're going to have, being that you're searching for DIY videos. You're going to need some needle nose pliers, another pair of pliers, scissors, carpenter's knife with a really sharp blade I'd put a new one on if I were you, and the old heat gun, one of my favorite things for DIY mods. All right, man, this, <laughs> this is so simple. All you do is take a pair of scissors, and then you make a cut at both ends. All right, now what we're gonna do is put your 5 16th, at least that's what I'm using here, it works well, and then bend your loop wire. Now here is a good time if you want to put a pair of pliers, just a pair of scissors, um, if you want to make it look cleaner, if you don't want to put a carabiner on here, if you want to go straight to the tool that you're going to be using, uh, add that now. Maybe about the zip tie, 
And why I said to bring two pairs of pliers is you'll want to tighten this up as tight as you possibly can. So it's nice to get a pair of pliers right there and another pair of pliers on the zip tie and then you pull. And then once you got it, pull as tight as you can. You hear a couple clicks and the idea is it's so much pressure, it just kind of starts to flare out a bit. That's when you know it's super tight. All right, next step is kind of important. So you're gonna wanna snip this off. But it'd be really tempting just to go snip and done. But what you're gonna try to do is try to cut it as close as you possibly can to this, uh, to the edge here. If not, it will scratch you and it's super annoying. Pressure cut those. I find it really easy to do on the edge of the table. Let me get as close as you can. Look at that. Look at that, perfect. All right, next step before you heat shrink this thing is you'll probably want to put the cure beater on and give it a nice hard tug to make sure that doesn't slip out there to make sure you actually have the zip tie tight enough. So this is not, not going anywhere. All right, make sure that you test the strength on both sides and then break out the heat gun. All right, this is how you make it super clean. Take the shrink wrap tube and of course place it over the wires and apply some heat. I'll go ahead and start doing that now. Super clean. Once that's done, get a second to cool. Go ahead and, while this is cooling, work on the other side. All right, once you heat this up, you're gonna let them cool down a little bit so they'll harden. Uh, so far, looking really good. All right, last step is to add the carabiners. Boom. Boom. And now you can show off to your friends and show them how you turn this old phone charger into a high quality DIY leash for your kayak. All right, now that we got the leashes figured out, uh, if you have a sit-in kayak, this next video will be just for you because we're gonna sh I'm gonna show you how to increase your storage five-fold. All right, kind of fun story. I actually found this on a tributary of the Ohio River. I was out kayak fishing, saw this thing submerged underneath a, a tree. It was full of mud. It's been there for a while, so hooked it up to my fishing kayak, pedaled it back to my trailer, and then took it home. I actually called the police, they came over, took the VIN number, and essentially said, hey, if no one picks this thing up, uh, it's yours. And that was a year ago. So I figured now it is time to start modifying this normal kayak, this little Sun Dolphin Aruba 10, into a fishing kayak. All right, since we're gonna be cutting into this thing here in a little bit, uh, I'm actually gonna strap it to the table so it doesn't move around a whole lot. Okay, where are we gonna get that extra storage space? Well, you see here, you open up the hatch, they just give you a little bit of room here. Not that much. And there is a ton of room underneath this plastic. So we're gonna cut into this and I'm gonna show you a few of the nuances and you're gonna be able to fold up the sides and make it look real nice and get a whole lot more storage area. All right, now remember, if you love kayak fishing, my videos drop every Thursday at 11.45 a.m. Hit that sub and bell notification and I will keep them coming. All right, now the first step of doing this is you're gonna to wanna to be able to mark an area we're gonna cut. Now you're gonna to want to leave a little bit of lip here because that's what we're gonna use the heat gun to fold the back. All right, there it is. Now you don't need to make this level because the reality is you're gonna be folding this up and you're not gonna see it. So um, I thought I did a pretty good job just making the mark, just eyeing it a couple inches. Um, so now what you're gonna do is you need to grab one of two tools. All right, the first tool you can use is if you have a cutting wheel on your grinder, that'll make quick work of this. I'll do that in a little bit. As you can see, it cuts through really fast, but if you don't have one of these, and it's kind of difficult to get the angles, you can also use a much simpler option, which is the carpenter's knife. All right, I'd recommend you put a new blade in here. I just got this one. Now, ready to make the cut. Since this does take a little bit longer, I'm just gonna use my grinder. All right, had a few almost through, just this little part over here to cut, because the angle is weird. Aha, you see here, get this guy out. Bye. Now you just freed yourself up for a lot more space. This is great. Now here's the thing. This is gonna. This is not going to affect your buoyancy at all. Um, sometimes you open this up, there'll be some styrofoam in here. This one does not have any, um, but this is not a problem. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a cut right here, here, 
here and then here and then we're gonna get heat gun on these and fold them up and let them um, cure and so these will be backed up underneath so I'm gonna make the line but leave a little bit of just a little bit at the top all right see I've kind of made a few more cuts um, all the angles here because the idea is uh, once you heat this up with a heat gun you can kind of fold it back and it's already starting to do it a little bit kind of fold these back here all the way around uh, but applying heat will help it get cool and then we'll let it cool after that and they should all kind of stay up there so let's go ahead and get the heat gun working definitely recommend using some gloves because the plastic is going to get hot you need to mold it with your hand pinch on that. If you have some wood clamps, these will be nice as well because once they get nice and hot, instead of you holding them, you can just kind of tighten these up and let them cool like that as you work your way around. So. All right, now after you got these heated up, you notice as I put my hand around here, smooth all the way around. Not gonna cut yourself, no need to do any sanding. Um, looks pretty sharp. All these are flaps are bent underneath. They're cooling, I still feel some of them are warm. Oh, boom, man, 5X storage on your Sun Dolphin. Hey, if this video brought you value, please hit that like button, sub and bell, and I'll keep them coming. All right, guys, see ya, bye.